We're going to learn how to use LT Spice to verify DC ver voltages and currents. LT Spice is a free circuit simulator for the PC environment. You can download and install LT Spice from this link. Linear Technology has some great resources located here and here but they tend to be more helpful if you already know about circuit simulators or have some electrical engineering experience. You should ultimately read through these tutorials but do not try to memorize each slide or each functionality or even read that closely. Just get, a familiar, get familiar with it and then use my tutorials to actually get started. Once you've gotten started, you can come back and read these. These are great resources. LT Spice can simulate DC, AC, transient, noise of lump circuit elements, and that's resistors, capacitors, inductors, transistors, and op amps. DC is for when the currents and voltages don't change in time. AC is when the the voltages and currents have a frequency component. Transient is how things change in time and noise is a little bit beyond this introductory course um, and we'll be dealing with resistors, capacitors, inductors, and op amps. There will be some circuits that have transistors uh, as an example but we will not be going over how they work. LT Spice can be used to verify your design and to predict the system responses that are too complex for algebraic analysis. Another term for this is hand calculations. And to give you an example of what something is too complex for a hand calculation is trying to find the solution to where x equals cosine x. You can rapidly see that there's no algebraic solution to this. Now you might try to expand it. Here's the, expand, here's the first two terms of expanding of cosine. And this is a way to do it. And if I have x and x cubed, I can find algebraic solution for things. But this only works for small values of x. And I could take five terms and still the value of x would have to be pretty small for this to be valid. X is not usually small in electrical engineering, it's usually some kind of time. And so LT Spice can make this kind of numerical solution to this problem. Now, for those of you who have a Linux machine or a Mac, that's okay. You can use the Wine environment to, to run LT Spice. Now, a little bit about what LT Spice is not is that it won't think for you. It won't come up with the circuit that will uh, be used to solve the particular design problem you have. And in fact, usually there's three or four possible circuits that will possibly work. You have to, in a way, propose them to LT Spice after your hand calculations you're relatively sure that it'll work and then verify that it does work. Now if we look at a schematic some of the symbols you should all be familiar with. This is a voltage source and it's acting like a battery. This is ground and you need to give everything a reference. All voltages are me measured with respect to ground and by definition wherever this symbol is anything on that wire is at zero volts. So you would go up 3.3 volts. This is a net name for the node voltage. I just put that as one and you can even name it something called reference. All right. And we have two resistances. When you haven't set the R value, it just gives an R value here. This is the name of the voltage source. So I want to do a design example. For instance, I want to design a one volt reference circuit that uses resistors from a 3.3 volt battery. Well, that's what a, a voltage divider is for. And so here's my circuit in LT Spice. 
the idea that I wanted to use a voltage divider doesn't come from the program. It came from my own experience and it doesn't tell me what resistor values to use. So in order to get this circuit to work, let's do a quick review. We have Ohm's law, voltage equals current times resistance. And in this circuit, V1, the total battery voltage, is going to equal the current through both of these resistors, or R total. I can solve for I, and I have the battery voltage divided by the two resistances in series. Now that I know the current, I can find that node voltage, V ref, which is the current times that voltage drop. And we get this equation. Now I have an equation for V reference. I know V1, that's the battery. Um, I know what I want V ref to be. What I don't know are these two resistance values. And I really only have this one equation to try to choose two values. Well, if I go back to what the original specification was, it was a voltage reference, meaning I just want a voltage. I'm not trying to power anything, I just want a voltage. Well, that means I want to minimize the current flow. And minimizing the current flow means I want these resistances to be as large as possible. Now, based on experience, R1 or R2 could be 1 mega ohm. And 1 mega ohm tends to be the largest resistance you can use in these kinds of circuits. Now the question of whether it should be R1 is 1 mega ohm and then solve for R2, or R2 is 1 mega ohm and solve for R1. I choose R1 to be 1 mega ohm because then when I solve for R2, it'll be less than a mega ohm and thus I won't violate my rule of thumb. Now the first time I solved this problem, I, I might have even guessed incorrectly and, and selected R2 as 1 mega ohm. That's something based on experience and sometimes you're going to go down the wrong path. But with um, your analysis skills, you can get yourself back on the right path. All right. So like I said before, if power is going to be equal I times V and we want to minimize this power, right? no matter how large this voltage is, if the power will be zero if I can make that current zero. Now, I can't make it zero, but I can make it as small as possible. So if I look at the equation for current, if I maximize these two values, I'll minimize the current. So I use one mega ohm as a, the largest practical resistance. Now that I know what R1 is, I can solve for R2 and I get 433,782 ohms, which it's pretty hard to buy a resistance that specific. If you go to Anchor Electronics, you can find a list of resistors that that you can actually buy. And the closest resistance in this case is 432 kilo ohms. Now it's just something that they do is that that capital K is the same as a small k is equal to a thousand. Sometimes this can cause trouble so be aware of the metric units. Now I can plug this into my circuit. I have R1 1 mega ohm, R2 432 kilo ohms. This simulation .opt tells me to tells us software to calculate a DC operating point and I get 3.31 volts which is node 1 that's true and a V reference of 0 0.995531 volts which matches my hand calculations exactly so you can see that in this simple circuit I was able to match my hand calculations to the spice or the spice to my hand calculations exactly now that's just generic how LT spice can be used uh, maybe now you want to go through these uh, download the software read the tutorial read this other t uh, tutorial like I said again don't memorize these materials just get used to the interface I do have 
In the next example, one video that takes you through the PowerPoint slides on how to use LT Spice, and another video that is just recording me using LT Spice. It's the same example, just presented slightly differently.